Hey folks, Dr. Mike Isertel here for Renaissance Periodization, RP Diet Book 2.0 Grand Tour. If you're interested in any of this stuff, by the way, right in the description below will be a link to purchase the Renaissance Diet Book 2.0. Amazing book. I may have written parts of it. Who knows? I don't remember a thing nowadays. Chapter 15, Gut Health. Dr. Gabrielle Fondaro wrote this chapter. She's our super, super expert on gut health. Here's the deal. Just going to summarize this chapter a little bit, way more info and tons of links to the research in the chapter itself. All concerning the gut microbiome, just a couple factoids. First up, gut microbiome and appetite. There's been a lot of speculation and there's almost certainly some effects. So yes, your gut microbiome probably has effects on your appetite. In some senses, it can increase it, or in some situations, in some, some situations, it can decrease it, but the literature is far too nascent for us to be able to tell which way it goes. So for the next year or two, for sure, be very wary of stuff you see, especially like popular newspaper articles about this sort of thing. <laughs> newspaper, I'm showing my age, right? If you read articles online and it says, you know, gut health, this and that, and appetite, it's going to be one or two studies on that for the next couple of years. And as there's four, five, six, seven studies, we can probably start to understand how that looks. So for now, we can't give any recommendations on how that works. To put this in perspective, it could be that if you're in dysbiosis, which means a not so great situation in gut health, sometimes that could actually lower your appetite and cause you to lose weight, right? So it's not really clear that your gut health is like, if you just check it off the list, you're going to start losing fat and stuff that might be the other way around. So we have yet to see. Next up, metabolism. It's very likely that certain kinds of gut microbiomes overrepresented or underrepresented can influence the chances of obesity. This has been shown in animals to some very limited extent. We're still awaiting good large sample size human trials about exactly how pronounced this effect is, exactly how it works, and what we can do about it. So again, very tentative. This is a big theme in this chapter, which I'll mention uh, towards the closing of this video that a lot of this is very, very tentative. So anyone selling you, you know, this is exactly how it works for the next probably one or two years. Um, it might be off to a little bit uh, of a rocky start, uh, claiming a little bit more than we currently know. What about how does diet affect the gut microbiome? Here we know a little bit more. Fiber is almost certainly good for the gut microbiome, for health in general, right? Veggies, fruits, whole grains are almost always recommended in most cases. They improve the gut microbiome, among other things. They are just very, very excellent for your health. Probably high saturated fats are not the best idea. They tend to seem to increase the kinds of gut bacteria that might not be the best for your health. Uh, a little bit more research needed on that, but that's the way it's starting to look. And the evidence is pretty solid. And um, some people have said that, you know, low carb eating is good for gut health. That's probably not the case. As a matter of fact, if we had to take a shot in the dark right now from the literature we do have, low carb is probably worse for your gut microbiota. That's not for sure, but that's the way it's looking. So keep that in mind. Definitely don't fall for any sort of quick fix. Well, if your gut microbes are off, you should drop your carbs. It's, it's if anything, it's the other way around. Increase your fiber, veggies, fruits, so, uh, so on and so forth. <clears throat> Next up, artificial sweeteners. Honestly, the jury is still out. There's been a couple of studies on artificial sweeteners that say they uh, cause some degree of dysbiosis, so gut bacteria being out of balance, and some has shown that this dysbiosis, when performed in animals, actually results in body fat gain from artificial sweeteners. Very, very concerning. The problem is all of the direct studies on artificial sweeteners for weeks and weeks and months at a time show no body fat gain, right? And uh, that that be something that's just very mysterious. Like, if it was a very straightforward effect, we could just write that off the list and be like, sweet, we understand it. But when, like, you know, 10, 20, 30 trials show that people just don't gain fat when they use artificial sweeteners versus like water, for example, like Diet Coke versus water. It just, it's, you know, if the dysbiosis really is affecting body fat gain, it must be occurring in some really interesting way. Another thing they've shown is a lot of the effects of artificial sweeteners and gut microbiota are probably transient. It's just, they don't happen for a very long time. So if you increase your artificial sweeteners, some gut microbiomes change for a little while and then they might go back to normal. If you decrease them, they may really go back to normal pretty quickly. So we need more research in this area. We already know that out of all the artificial sweeteners so far tested, sucralose seems to be the one that interferes the least with gut microbiome. So if you're really sort of worried about it, but you still want to do artificial sweeteners, which is probably totally fine, uh, might want to go a little bit more for sucralose. Probiotics. Uh, 
Um, probiotics are basically is when you take in sort of live cultures of bacteria in some way or another, and they're supposed to be very good for your health. The thing is, like, in theory, they could work. And we know that we also need relatively large doses, way larger than most uh, commercial preparations have in the literature in which, in which the pro probiotics actually work. Uh, they're, they're given in substantially larger, larger doses than most commercial products sell. But even there, it's not clear that they help in the medium to long term. Sometimes they can alter bacterial ratios for a while and then it goes back to normal. We honestly don't know yet. So probiotics might be something that we find either works really well in the future or find ways to make it work really well. But for now, if you're like super hopeful that there's just probiotics, they'll just fix it right up. It, it's just not clear that that's the case. And there's some reason to be skeptical. Um, second to last, exercise. Pretty much every single study they've done shows that a regular level of pretty hard exercise is just good for your gut microbiome, right? It just makes it seem to be healthier and function more effectively in every way measured. So uh, if you really worried about your gut microbiomes, you had better be exercising, right? Because that seems to be almost a panacea for a lot of things, really. Uh, and a gut microbiome seems to be no exception. Lastly, before we close out the video summary of this chapter, and again, if you're super interested about any of this, by all means, check out the book. It's got way more details. Here's the deal. Sure thing conclusions. Like, this is how the gut microbiome works. You got to take this supplement. You got to eat this. You got to eat that. You must do this. This is exactly how it works. We just don't have enough literature on that right now. And we probably won't for the next several years. Now, it'll get better over the next several years. We'll develop more solid conclusions. But for the next year, so this video is being recorded sort of really close to New Year's 2019, until 2020 plus, probably 2021 or something like that, I just wouldn't put a ton of stock into real definitive statements about gut bacteria. So if you hear someone be like, we found the solution to improving your gut microbiome, ooh, that sounds like it's probably some BS. And good news, a bunch of companies and other folks, you know, gurus and stuff have already claimed they had gut bacteria solutions when they first learned about gut bacteria two years ago. It was BS now, it'll probably be BS within the next year, but over the next three or four years, we're gonna start to have some pretty good tentative recommendations that will solidify and we'll learn a lot more and don't worry, We'll update the book then to reflect that. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys for the next chapter summary.